welcome to today. Give me just a moment. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's class, Painting Lemon and Time in Artist Loft Acrylic. This is part two of a, oh, let me see. Oh, I don't have myself spotlighted right now, so I was worried that I wasn't spotlighted. And my cat is trying to make a guest appearance uh, this evening. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, tonight's class is uh, part two of a class that we began last week, and we'll be finishing up this uh, this painting that I have in front of me. Uh, and uh, before we get started for tonight, I just wanted to mention uh, the classes that we have coming up in November, because tonight's class is uh, my last class of October for Michaels, and um, Oh my goodness, I'm so distracted by, by my cat. I'm afraid she's about to jump on my desk. Um, so in November, uh, we have a couple of classes on drawing hands. So I have uh, this class on drawing a hand with a reference photo uh, provided, and we'll be looking at the contours uh, and contour lines of the hand and that three-dimensional form and as well as very general uh, scaffolding to build drawing a hand, because I know that that is a very challenging uh, subject for a lot of folks. And then we've got a follow-up class to that, uh, drawing hands using uh, pen and ink, and we'll be zooming in on a couple of the reference photos that I provide for those classes and drawing some nice detailed value on some fingers like that and then excuse me ma'am um later in november uh, we've got this class on perspective studies using this uh reference some reference images of a polaroid box and so we'll be looking at one two and three point perspective but it will be very loose and very general and uh, very helpful for those of you who struggle with the basics of linear perspective and that's something that we haven't focused on in a while and we'll also be using these really fun artist loft alcohol-based markers for that so that's what's coming up in november and i'm looking forward to those classes so i just wanted to make sure that i mentioned those before we have our our two week break tonight. And then I just submitted my classes for uh, December. So someone had requested a uh, pet portrait class recently when we had some extra time at the end of one of these classes and I decided to, to do that. So anyway, oh, well, actually I actually already have that tab here. So we've got I'm redrawing my, my guest star behind me. Uh, tonight. So anyway, if you want to sign up for those upcoming classes, you can do that where you signed up for uh, tonight's class. Okay, I'm going to switch to my tabletop view and get started going over supplies here. Don't forget to tag your work with the hashtags make it with Michaels or Michaels classes and you can follow me on Instagram at 80 Hodge. I'm also on Facebook Adrian Hodge Fine Art. And um, a lot of work using calligraphy ink. So there's some of my business cards with some of my personal artwork on it, if you haven't seen that. Okay, so uh, we're using the Artist Loft acrylic and I've got this little just set of 12 here. So I'm pretty basic, inexpensive Artist Loft acrylic set and then I've got a little eight piece acrylic uh, synthetic paintbrush set that I'm using and then we're using these wood panels here so this is the one with my completed demo and then this is where we left off last week okay so I'm going to review what we did in last week's class building up to where we left off and then we will jump back in and get this thing finished up and I'm really excited about where we left off because I feel like it was just off to a really great start and everybody who shared 
their paintings last week at the end of the class, had lots of lovely examples. And yeah, we're it's just gonna paint itself. It's almost there. We just have to fill in the blanks. Okay, so we started out, um, oh, and I guess I should talk about a few other supplies. I've got my water cup, I've got my paper towels. Like, I feel like I forgot something. Uh, but, but that's it, pretty basic here now that we're at this point. We don't really need our pencil too much more. Uh, I did provide these reference photos for the class. So we started out last week doing some preliminary sketches of our lemon and thyme. And I encouraged folks to maybe go a little bit off script and not follow me exactly step by step um, and maybe use one of these other reference photos. So there was one reference photo without the the time in there. And then there was another one where the time was laid out in front of the lemon on the, the countertop. So you had a couple of options and we broke down the contour lines that that we see on on those objects. Wonderful cat is still terrorizing me right now, y'all. <laughs> He's been sleeping all day and she just decided she needs some attention right now. Okay. <coughs> uh, so yeah, we looked at those contour lines and we looked at the value and the light and talked about some different composition choices that we might have to deal with. And I'm assuming most of us who are in the class tonight were in the class last week, but in case you missed it, uh, you can check it out on YouTube or um, if you wanna you know, quickly jump to, to where we are. The first step that we did after sketching it and getting ourselves familiar with the three dimensions and the, the light that was happening and how to make sure that we squeeze the full objects into our frame here without going over the edge because that's easy to do and I almost did that a little bit with my other example it got a little off center there so I tried to be more mindful of that with this one and got them both a little more centered and made them a little smaller in this iteration as well and we started out with a yellow thinned out paint and we sketched our lemons in again with this underpainting method of painting with yellow paint. And then we made some very thin washes of uh, yellow and black and blue. And we, we filled in the background and we got started adding some of the differences in, in tone of that yellow that we were seeing. So that's where I wanna pick up uh, tonight. And I see Casey's asking, did we prime the board or use gesso? No, we did not do that. You are welcome to do that. Uh, someone uh, last week asked if they should prime the board. You're totally welcome to, to prime the board, but I just like the way that wood grain looks showing through. And I wanted to keep it simple, but You are totally welcome to do that if you would like. It would just take a little bit of time for that primer to dry before you would want to start with your, your underpainting, but that would just take about maybe 10 or 15 minutes if you had the, the time to do that and wanted to catch up with us later. Okay, so yeah, we used a very thin paintbrush and we thinned out that yellow to do the underpainting. We filled in those first few layers with some thin washes and we just sort of sketched in the line of that X that the, the time makes if you were putting that in there. All right, so to pick up where we left off, we need to get our, our colors mixed up here. So I've got a few plastic palettes I use here, which I just realized I <laughs> forgot to mention. Like the cat was really making me nervous, y'all. She knocked over a full glass of water right before my class last week and broke glass everywhere. She is just on a tear doing crimes 
lately. So I don't know what she's capable of. I got a full cup of coffee here, <laughs> my water cups for my paint. But she settled down. So my, my blood pressure's settling as well. She knows how to get my adrenaline pumping right before Michael's class. Okay, so we've got a few different yellows that we're seeing here. I just want to point those out a little bit. So we're going to make three different yellows. We want a pale yellow with some white and white and yellow. And then we want the yellow just straight out of the tube, this lemon yellow here, coincidentally. Pretty easy. This is a very easy color palette compared to some of the, the color mixing we've had to do for some other classes. This one is very straightforward. We're using a lot of these colors straight out of the tube here. Okay, so we need the lemon yellow and the white. Um, I might just go ahead and squeeze out a little bit more white here since we're going to need a lot of it. And then we're going to use the yellow okra as well. And we might as well get our blue out. I'm going to do that in a separate palette. And I just used the ultramarine blue straight out of the tube. except for I watered it down. And I do want to get another layer on this background uh, before we get too far on the, the lemon. So we probably will go ahead and do that first. Um, but yeah, I wanted to go ahead and have these yellows mixed up so we can transition to that pretty quickly. But as I was talking, I realized I want to get another layer on that blue. Okay, but we'll go ahead and mix up our, our yellow first since we're talking about it. Get it ready. So we'll start out with our white. You always want to start with the lighter color first and then uh, slowly add the darker color that you're mixing, which even though yellow is still pretty light, go for a darker color. And I even like to start off like over to the side and you know, very timidly add it because you can always add a little bit more. And yeah, we're looking for a really pale yellow. So you don't need too much yellow to make that happen. A lot of white and a little yellow. I might even go ahead and make a couple of different versions of it. One that's even paler. Doesn't hurt to have little nuanced shifts in these colors and then we're going to drip a little bit of water into these colors and just we're not going to make them a wash but we just really want enough water to keep it wet or else it's going to dry up in the palette really quickly i'm just adding a little water just to get it a little fluid all right, and then just looking at that reference photo, we can see, oh wait, we said we were going to do the blue first. Okay, yeah, let's set that aside for a second. I want to do the blue first in case we need to like, in case we accidentally go over the lemon with our blue background. We don't want to have to repaint uh, and the white will be opaque enough hopefully need to cover up any issues that may happen when we're putting another layer on the background. And if you don't need another layer on your background, then don't worry about it. Uh, it's really up to you if you feel like you need that. I am gonna thin out this blue a little bit more here. And I happen to have this little spritzer bottle here. So I'm gonna use that. I don't have to drip so much. I'm just thinning out my blue. Doesn't hurt to have 
little spritzer bottles nearby. Okay, and yeah, you make this as thin as you want because the thinner it is, the more you'll see that uh, wood grain coming through. And I think that looks pretty nice. And we can always add water to it and spread it around because the thing about not priming this is that the wood really soaks up uh, the moisture and you will get an opportunity to spread it around a little bit more then you might be able to if this was on canvas. I'm gonna move my camera a little higher so we can see the entire thing as I add this layer. And last week we sort of went a little darker in the corners and created a little bit of a vignette or a glowing effect here. So I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna keep it Keep my brush strokes horizontal. Try to cover up that little imperfection I have in my, my wood panel here. I'm keeping my brush strokes horizontal. I'm starting in the corners. I'm just going very quickly and spreading it around. And I kind of wish I had bought a different set of these brushes, like a flat brush would go a lot faster, but for some reason I bought this set with all the, the round brushes only. And I have a million flat brushes, but I'm trying to stick to my artist loft supplies here for acrylic paint brushes. And another thing we could have done that might have been helpful is we could have taped off the side of our board in case you accidentally get a drip down there. Uh, but I'm just trying to keep myself from doing that. And then I just did it and I dropped a little bit of blue on my lemon. So I'm going to demonstrate how paint is not permanent and we should be able to lift out any moments like that that may occur. So if that happens to you, it's no big deal. And it definitely is tricky to keep my brush strokes horizontal while filling this in quickly, but it can be done. All right, then I'm just gonna add some water, and blend this around. And I like just keeping things thin because then we can you know, manipulate those layers and, and add more. I can also take my paper towels here in just a second and spread this around. I did the same thing last week. Getting more of a line this week than last week. Kind of scrub it a little bit so I can get it to feel nice and ethereal. Let me do that again, but a little faster this time before it dries on me. I'm just trying to blend out that little separation between light and dark that's happening here. And another thing I could do is just go ahead and go right up to the edge of the lemons with it and then scrub it out. That would probably blend it out a little bit more. And that would probably be more helpful for me to demonstrate for y'all because I have a feeling I might not be the only one that that happened to. So by just making it thinner towards the lemons, I'm able to maintain that that fun vignette while still getting it to blend out that weird line that was happening. And this is where the round brush is definitely more helpful. Maybe do a little circular motion here if you're still getting those weird little streaky lines that won't go away. Doing a little scrubby motion to try to blend those out. A little finesse 
that's one of those things that just cannot be taught, y'all. <laughs> I do a lot of demonstrations and in-person classes and people are like, well, wait, what are you doing now? You just started doing something real quick and I don't know how to copy that. And I'm like, oh yeah, sorry, that's called finesse. We had to just practice that one. So this is the area that why we wanted to do the blue background first. Oh, let me pull this down a little bit. I feel like I'm going off screen a little. But yeah, if you accidentally paint into your lemon right here, it's a better spot for us to be in if we haven't done anything to the lemon yet and it's all dry because then we can clean up some of these weird background moments that might seep in to the lemon. But if we had already painted our lemon, then some of the lemon might be seeping into the background or, you know, we would just have to do more layers to, to cover up the blue. All right, and then yeah, the more I just get in there and do that little scrubby motion, the more I should get rid of any weird lines. So I said to paint horizontally, but then I'm really doing more of this circular motion because that's helping me get rid of those streaks. Okay, and then I can take my paper towel again and kind of do a similar circular motion with it and get it to feel more like a stain on that wood grain. Let the wood grain come through and give it that little glow of light around our lemons. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, so now we want to start adding some more layers to our lemons. I think I lost a couple of paintbrushes somehow. I suppose that's it. Felt like I had a couple more. Okay, so we'll start out with that light yellow, that pale yellow that we made. And we're looking at these little pie slices on the, these kind of little pie slice shapes that we see on the lemon half here. And we're gonna start adding some of those big areas of pale yellow that we're seeing. And actually, this might need to be a little darker now that I'm seeing it on there. I thought I wanted it that pale. It is going to dry and look a little different. And we can put a few different layers in here and we can add the dark yellow back in and those yellow highlights. I'm just bouncing around. And adding that that light yellow. I have a glare, and I think it's because of this 
sometimes having the screen on there really messes with my light. So let me move that and maybe we turn off a light too. The perils of teaching on Zoom with light materials. Okay, so yeah, we're just trying to develop those little high slice shapes and get like a base going for that pale yellow that we're seeing throughout on those. And we're going for kind of a whimsical, cartoonish, illustrated feeling here. So we're not worried about exact realism or anything. We're just trying to match these colors so that we get something that doesn't feel completely flat and cartoonish. It has a little dimension to it. But don't get too hung up on if your shapes are exactly in the right place as they appear there, as long as you've got something that feels like pie slices that all connect to each other and that follow this, this flat plane here, then you're good. And we talked about those diagonal lines that we could think about across the surface of this lemon half last week. And yeah, as this color dries, it's gonna fade a little bit and not look quite so light. So we'll end up putting a few different layers. And then once we have that on there, let's go ahead and put this white in the center. And I'm not gonna add too much water to this. I want this to be nice and thick. I wanna really start to bring this to life and it's not pure white across the whole thing it's little patches of this like starburst shape so having that variation between the white and then that really pale yellow white will achieve that effect and using that third pale yellow that or i guess the second pale yellow that we made in parts of that and then i'm going to go ahead and use that same pale yellow not the white the one that had just a tiny bit of yellow in it to do the little lines of like a pulp. Even though this all feels kind of faint on my Zoom, hopefully you're seeing a huge difference in the surface and three dimensions of your lemon so far by doing this. I can see the, the difference on the Zoom. It's just not popping as much as I would like it to. And I'm going to clean my brush and I want to establish this darker yellow that's on the outer edge of the lemon. So this line of the, the darker yellow lemon color 
end of the peel, I'm gonna add a little bit of this yellow okra to the lemon yellow. I just want it to be slightly darker. But I don't want it to be too dark that it's like mustard yellow. So you gotta find that balance. Just enough to make it stand out more. Okay, and then we're not gonna just do like a hard line all the way around it. We're gonna we wanna make it a little uneven. And then we're going to go through with the regular yellow and do this as well. And if your blue is showing through, my blue is showing through. So it's looking a little green on that edge. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually paint this all white first. So we can try to get rid of that blue and make it more opaque. And then, then we'll go back and add the yellow on top of that when it dries. Actually, since we need that thick white line, inside of here, we're just going to go ahead and go all the way to the edge for now with that white because we're trying to cover up the blue. And since the white is our most opaque, we are just going to go ahead and do a hard, hard line there. I'm steadying my hand a little bit like with my pinky, making a little tripod here to try to control my line as much as possible. And I just had a weird little moment happen. So I'm gonna go back and clean that up in just a second. I'm just gonna leave it there. So I really am just dragging it all the way across. Even though I said I, we weren't going to do a hard line, then I realized I'm going to cover up that blue. So we are doing a pretty hard line. We're doing a bit of some surgery here. We're laying down a bit of a primer to be able to put that yellow on top and not see the blue coming through. This acrylic paint is often very transparent. A lot of colors can be very transparent, but the white is going to be your most opaque. So if you need to cover something up, if possible, just paint some white on it first, let that dry, and then go back over it with that color. Unless I don't know, unless you're trying to put a darker color there, then the white might not make sense, but it does this time. Okay, so that looks very stark right now. And we really didn't want this white of the, the rind to be like super white. Um, we wanted to kind of fade that out a little bit, so because it's not white across the whole thing. We talked about that a little bit last week, so I'm just kind of dry brushing a little bit to blend that out. And maybe we'll transition while we wait for that to, to dry. Oh my gosh, I keep bumping this camera, and I got tall paintbrushes and that camera right there easy to bump it sometimes. Okay, so I'm just transitioning by adding more of that pale yellow and blending that out. I said we were probably gonna do this a few times and here we are. 
because those layers dry and it just doesn't quite look the same. So we've got to build up as many layers as we need to to get where we're going. Especially when working on this wood surface without priming it because it is very absorbent as we've already talked about. And you can get in there and do like a little patching line. Start to get the texture of the lemon going there. And blend it out, whatever makes sense. Okay, and then we can just go ahead and start to put our yellow in there too, our pure lemon yellow, and do the same sort of thing. So we're flicking our wrist, streaking in that darker yellow, or the, the regular lemon yellow. It's not looking super dramatic on my screen, but it, it is looking nice on my painting. So hopefully you're feeling the same way. You can start to notice some of the different shapes that you might be seeing with some of these variations in the yellows. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing with just the uh, yellow okra as well. And maybe if the yellow ochre looks too strong on its own, you can use that mixture of yellow ochre and yellow, and the lemon yellow. I'm looking at some of those different organic shapes to some of the, the low lights. And just jumping around and blending that so it doesn't look so stark. And I can even blend it with the, the other yellows if it's still just looking a little too stark. And you might just have to do this a few times to get it to feel organic. Like maybe you put in this darker yellow and it all feels a little outlined. So then you go back in with the lighter yellow. And the last thing we'll do is put those absolute white highlights on there. And at a certain point, I kind of want to always stop painting from your photo reference and look at your painting and just see what your painting needs. I thought I stole that line from an art teacher friend of mine. Uh, his name's Matt Ribholtz at the 
at Laguna Gloria in Austin where I teach here and I told him that the other day and he's like oh I'm sure I stole that line from somebody else so like well I've been giving you credit for it because one of my students took his class and said he said that anyway so it's good advice at a certain point you gotta stop looking at your reference and just start painting your painting because this lemon that we're painting is not 100% identical to the, the lemon in the photograph, but it's, it's starting to look very lemon-like. And if I held myself too tightly to that reference, I might do something unnecessary to my painting. This is looking pretty good as it is. Okay, and now that white that we added should be dry. So I'm going to take my pure lemon yellow now. You see what that looks like on that outer edge. So I kind of just wanted to use both this lemon yellow and the the one with the yellow okra in it and kind of stipple it around until we get the feeling of the, the edge of the peel on the outer edge. Let me see, I think I need the yellow okra again. I just can't make up my mind. I keep looking at my other example to see what I did. It looks like I did it a few times. Sometimes things just don't happen on the first pass. So it looks like I probably did it maybe even three or four times. And that is okay if it takes a few tries to get it to look the way we're trying to get it to look. I'm accidentally going over too much of the white here, but then I can always put that white back in. I might not have left quite enough space for myself. Maybe I needed an even thicker band of white. Now I'm going into my blue a tiny bit again. Lemon edge is giving me trouble, y'all. Oh, there we go. That's kind of fun. It gives it a little glowing effect. And then last week when they held up their painting had a very glowy thing happening that I was really into. Maybe that's what you did on that wood panel to make it glow, and that is not a bad idea. And then we'll wipe it out with that paper towel and it gives it a fun little effect there. I'm not mad about it. Those are those happy accidents that Bob Ross was always talking about. Right. So yeah, that yellow okra doesn't necessarily belong there too much, but we're using it to build up some, some volume here. So I'm going to paint into, just keep going with that, that mixture of yellow okra and lemon yellow. And we're trying to like build up some volume and some depth on the outer peel here. And we want this to all feel connected to the edge of the peel as well. And then we're gonna go back in and add some white highlights to it and give it more dimension. But first we wanna give it just some three-dimensional volume. So paying attention to those contours wrapping around here. And again, we're not looking for photo realism, but we still wanna capture the dimension of light that we're seeing. 
So we just need a couple of layers to build up some depth. Right, but then yeah, that looks a little too dark um, for now, but we're going to leave it for now. And go back in with that light yellow. And like I said, you can kind of stipple with it. So like do some little dots start to create some of that grain that we're seeing maybe in just that imperfect edge. Or you can make it a clean line. It's up to you. I'm using pretty thick paint here because that's also going to help me build up some volume. Do one more layer all the way around with the the lemon yellow by itself. And I might go back in and add the yellow okra on top, but like I said, the more layers we add, the more depths we'll have. All right, let me give that lemon a break for a second and jump over here to this other one because I feel like I'm getting too sucked into this one now. And that is some good advice just from one painter to another. Don't stay on the same subject for, for too long because sometimes you start to get into that overworking territory. All right, let me switch to a bigger brush here because this other lemon has a pretty big area that I'm going to cover with a lot of similar stuff. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing over here. We want to build up that volume using some different dimensions of our yellow. So we could really pick apart the colors that we're seeing on both of these lemons and, you know, maybe even use like a little bit of green and black. And we are going to add a little bit of black for, for a shadow in just a moment. But again, we're making it kind of cartoonish here. So we're just going to add some depth by adding the, the yellow ochre because we're keeping our colors pretty simple. So it's not identical to that, that lemon. So making my mixture of yellow and yellow ochre again, and then just getting it wet to keep it from drying out too much. Okay, and then following those contours, and I'm trying to build up the feeling of roundness here. And being uh, aware of that highlight in the center that we designated last week. And I'm leaving a little gap between the lemons because I know there's a gap between them where the, the time is.
kind of using that little scrubby motion to blend it out here. I want it to be that lighter yellow towards the highlight. So I can switch to my lighter yellow and then blend the two together using that same idea that we used like with the vignette. So I'm going in with kind of thicker lemon yellow and doing that scrubby motion, kind of finessing it again. And you might have to do this a couple of times to get it to blend and look believable. And then I'm switching to that mixture of white and yellow towards the highlight. But I do want some of that darker yellow in the middle there. So I'm just kind of putting that highlight back in like we designated it last week, but using thicker paint this time. And then mixing in that darker yellow and making a little bit of a spiral here. Like a snake eating its own tail, but in little dashes. It's a little galaxy of a highlight there in the center. And we can blend that out as many times as we need to. If we lose it, we can always paint over it. Paint is not permanent. If that was one major takeaway from any painting class that I teach, that would be it. Paint is not permanent. People get really freaked out in painting classes. Like they, you know, they mess it up. They can't fix it. And it's like, oh, but did you know that paint is not permanent and you can paint over things? It's kind of the beauty of paint. Although if we painted a big you know, slash of a dark color on here, nice and thick, then, you know, that might not go away. But a little bit of the wrong light yellow and your spiral gets lost, that's okay. You'll be able to paint that spiral again. You might have to do it a few times to get it to blend, like maybe I'll just completely blend it out and then put the highlights back in just to make it feel nice and organic and subtle here. Okay, but before I put the like absolute highlight back in, I actually wanna get this shadow across here. Um, so I don't want the shadow to be too strong. Let's actually use a little bit of brown instead of black with our yellow and see what happens. We might get a little bit of a greenish situation. I honestly can't remember what I did last time. It was two months ago <laughs> when I planned this class. I'm always planning two months in advance, so maybe I could write these things down, but I usually remember. Okay, yeah, so we want it to be a little bit green, so that's actually okay. So yeah, we're going to add a little bit of brown to that yellow, and it is going to give us kind of a weird little sickly green color, but I mean, that's what I'm seeing on that shadow. So, and we don't need it to be super strong. We just want the suggestion of shadow here, so... There's a shadow on this side of the lemon where the time is resting. We're giving it that kind of dirty yellow feeling. And again, you might have to do this a few times to get it to blend nicely. Like maybe you put the other yellow back in and do a few layers of this until you get it the way you want it. 
paint is not permanent and you can fix it a few times if you need to. And if you feel like you're fixing something too much, that's when you take a break and paint a different part of the painting, remember? You don't get too sucked in to overworking something. And then I want a little bit of a shadow over here as well. Yeah, if it starts to feel like the shadow is like dominating and taking over, that's where like I probably will go back in with my light yellow and blend this in just a moment. But then we need this over here on this side as well. And maybe even a little darker over here. But let's try adding some brown to our yellow ochre mixture here. Oh yeah, that's a good brown. That's what we want. Something like that. And we'll put that in there too. Because we do want it to be pretty dark underneath the time, but not too dark that it takes over because we're not going for realism. But we just want the light to make sense. You can't have something blocking something and not creating a shadow, not affecting the color at all. We need to just suggest our shadows. All right, and while we're on the subject of shadows, let's go ahead and paint our shadows. Oops. Everything sliding off my desk all of a sudden. All right, so. We'll just use black, but maybe we'll add, let's make our black. Let's use our blue and our brown to make our black. I don't believe that that's what I did last time, but it will make a better, more dimensional black here if we make it ourselves instead of using the black out of the two. So I'm just going to use my ultramarine blue and my raw umber together to make a black. And then we'll add a little bit of water to make it a little thinned out and fluid. That was way too much, but we are going to use the black for the, the time too, so. Not the last, not the only thing we need it for. Okay, we'll take some of that black over here. And yeah, it, it looks a little brown. It's got more dimension to it. Uh, slate black, like black paint out of a tube does not really occur in nature that much, so using a black that's got more of a brown or a blue hue to it is definitely you know capturing a little bit more realism with with light and it's still going to show up pretty dark black on our, our painting so i'm just keeping it pretty thick but i'm going to thin it out a little bit with water here but it is pretty dark closer to the lemon and I'm just kind of going up to the edge of where I know my time is going to end up and leaving a space there so that I can paint that without having to paint through the black of the shadow. But it's mostly the shadow that's being cast by this lemon over here that we, we've got in this this image 
couple of the other thumbnails that we did had different, had two shadows more. But this one, the shadow for the one that's face down is kind of covered up by the lemon. Okay, so here's where I can just add some water and thin this out because the shadow does look thinner in some places. You can add as many layers to your shadow as you need to, if you need to go back in and do that again. I'm liking how clean my edges are looking. And this one, this is turning out pretty nice so far. All right, we do have a little bit of a shadow coming in on this side a little bit. The more I look at it. And then we kind of exaggerated our shadow that we were seeing. Um, and the other lemon. And doing that little space in between, even though our time is going to go over this, just pretty dark between there. And you can't really see it, so you might as well. And yeah, I am getting a little bleedy thing happening from the wood panel. That's the, the only thing. I do like the way the wood grain shows through, but I don't like it when it bleeds a little bit, so... Waiting until, uh, or just using thicker paint will keep that from happening. The more water you use, the more it's going to kind of feather into the wood grain a little bit, but it doesn't bother me too much. I like the way the wood grain looks peeking through more than it bothers me. So, all right, might as well go ahead and put this little cowboy hat I was calling it last week. Little cowboy hat shape in there. I'm going to need a little bit of white and gray on that um, as well in just a bit. Okay, what's left? Maybe blend out our yellows a little bit more. Let me do that a little bit and then I'm going to add that. Those white highlights. And we're going to try to move on to the time pretty quickly here because I am aware of our time. We've got about 25 minutes left. I was thinking this was going so fast last week, but I forgot how, how long some of these layers take to build up. I was like, oh, this is going to go too fast. We're going to finish early, but now I don't think we are. Okay, I probably should have blended all this while it was still a little wet, but then I got sucked into that shadow on the bottom. So this is actually where the time is going to cover it up, so I'm going to leave it alone. I think that's fine. All right, we need that white line and those white highlights. Over here, so I'm using pretty thick paint, but I don't want it to be a perfect line. I want it to be kind of uneven. And maybe even you blend it a few times so it doesn't look too perfect all the way around because it just doesn't look perfect all the way around in the photograph. 
So you're just gonna fade it out a little bit. Let them have it nice and, and bright in some spots. So this is where a shaky hand is actually very helpful because you just don't want it to look too perfect. Okay. And then just, yeah, any little final touches that you feel like you need to your lemon half. That's where I'm just going to add some of those glistening highlights. jump around and just give it sometimes these can feel a little too perfect so you might like put these in there and then blend a few of them out but then you got to be careful if you blend them out too much they might take over all that lovely variation that you had before it's very easy to get like a bit obsessive with highlights sometimes. Like people are like, oh, this makes such a, a strong contrast. And then they like put it in there too much. And when I say people, I mean me, I do that. But I see other people getting carried away with that. That power too, it's intoxicating. Oh my gosh, look how much contrast I can create with these highlights. And then you're like, oh, went too far, too many highlights. All right, now I'll put the absolute white highlights back in on this moment over here. But luckily, with the way Zoom washes out everything I do here, if even if I did overdo my highlights, you would never know. All right, the last thing I want to do to these lemons before we move on to the time is to use our little black. Oh wait, let's make a little gray for that. That little cowboy hat moment. So I just added some black to some white. And I'm just painting in that gray shape I'm seeing there. And then I'm using this long skinny brush and my black and I'm gonna put some of those little freckles that I'm seeing. Like some little pinprick black dots. Anytime you're painting a piece of fruit or a flower or anything organic, a person, we're organic, you don't want to edit out the imperfections. You want to put those in there because that's what gives it character and makes it look like, like an organic thing. Okay, let's paint our time. So that's another reason you want to get that background out of the way so it'll be nice and dry by the time we do this. And mine is definitely dry. Okay, so first we want to make a pale green. So I'm going to take my white over here. Probably need to just get some more white squeezed out. And then we're going to add this, I'm going to call it Viridian Green, but it's called Hooker's Green. And it looks like a Viridian to me. And we're going to use more of this, but first we're going to make this pale green. 
And I'm going to add a little bit of brown to it, keep it from looking too minty. But actually, before the brown, let's try our yellow okra. That might be all we need. There we go. I just want to earth it up a little bit, make it a little more earthy, a little toned down. Might have to do that. I have to finesse it a little bit here. Okay, let's see. Let's add a little bit of brown and the green. And then add that to our white. Okay, that's still looking pretty minty. We'll add that yellow ochre. That looks pretty good. We're looking for this, this pale viridian green. But we don't want it to be too aquamarine looking. It's looking a little too fabricated. We want it to look like something like that. And just fold it up next to the, the time green. So that's what we're looking for. All right. So I think that works, but I could really use more of it. <laughs> Let me make some more of it. So I added a little bit of my brown, both of my browns that I have in this set. Just mixing all that up together. So yeah, if it's looking too much like this color, it's just not looking natural enough. So I added the yellow okra to it, maybe a little bit more brown. Okay, but we want a pretty good little pile of it. So we need to be able to draw our light time. Okay. I got all that good color on that paintbrush, but that's not the paintbrush I'm going to use to do it. I'm going to use this long skinny one. I'm going to load up that long skinny brush with that nice earthy pale time green. Like, I'm sure there's a can of green at Home Depot or somewhere called Time with that color on it. Okay, so we've got this brown in a lot of places too, but I'm just going to start drawing with this light green, the like little branches that are coming off. I'm going to let those guide me because, again, we're not going for hyper-realism here. We just want to give the impression of this time. So I'm going to just let, because it would be just be too easy to just put that dark brown in there and let it dominate too much. So I'm going to just draw with this, this green color. And that long skinny paintbrush and I'm really loading up my brush so I can get a lot of it going here and I know that it's not this dark all the way up on the stem or it's you know it's not this exact color but we're going to add some white to it to give it a highlight and we're going to let this color be the base And I'm just going to grab my other painting for a second just to show you how I let this color be the base. And then I added a white highlight to it. And then I'll, we'll go back in with the brown, et cetera, and then the darker green. So I'm not going for hyper realism. We're just trying to quickly get the impression of this time in here. And again, I don't see the green all the way up. I feel like it comes off of some of the branches more than others. 
We're gonna have a mixture of the green and the, the brown. And I was calling it like a cactus or pitchfork shape a little bit last week. You definitely want a good amount of this color. Like I'm already kind of running out of it to be able to draw with it like this. And you wanna be pretty confident that you're done with that lemon because we're going right right over the lemon in some places. Okay. Hopefully that's not too stressful. <laughs> There's a, a painter or an artist that I've, I mean, I guess he's a painter, obviously. Um, he's paint on Instagram who does these like huge paintings of faces, but then he like, what? I'm trying to remember what he does on the top of them, but he does these like black lines as if there's like something going in front of the faces and just watching the moment when he's painting the, the black line details across the faces is very stressful. Like he's got a very steady hand and he does it a lot. So he's pretty confident when he goes for it, but like, oh man talking about paint not being permanent but that's a lot of work to repaint that whole repaint a whole face okay um so we're looking for kind of a light brown here we've got a very earthy brown so we're mixing our two the yellow ochre together with the brown and then a little bit of white as well. Um, actually, I was also gonna add this uh, burnt sienna to it too. We're just looking for an earthy brown with a little bit of white to it that doesn't look too pale. This little palette's really getting Really get my money's worth on this little palette tonight. All right, so my two browns, a little bit of white, mixing all that together. Maybe some yellow okra in there as well. Just playing around with your browns until you get something that's nice and chocolatey but then we don't want it to be too light chocolatey there we go that's what i'm looking for so a brown with a little bit of light in it and we can always add some darker brown on top of this and then we're just going to draw with that Again, we're not looking for hyper-realism here. Might feel a little cartoonish. I'm gonna add some different highlights and shadows to it to make it feel a little more organic in just a moment. Start to add these leaves. That's when it's really going to come together. The little herby bits on here. Okay, so that's all looking a little too perfect and dark. So that's when I'm going to take. I felt like I just dropped water on there, but I didn't see where it went. That's when I want to take a little bit of this gray that we already made. Maybe you could add it to your brown, make it more of like a light brownish gray. And then we're just going to add some highlights. Oh my gosh, 
paintbrushes separating. All right, so I'm going to add some highlights. We don't want them to be too perfect. We want to give it like a feeling of three dimension though, too. And make it like feel double sided. You might have to go back in there and, you know, add some darker shadows to it if it feels a little too, a little too perfect in some places, but we can also camouflage a lot of this perfection here with the the little leaves we're about to put on. Okay. And then yeah, we want to highlight to the green as well. And you can always go back in with the green or the brown and blend this these highlights out a little bit more. All right, and then I'm looking for this little brush, either this one or this one, something like that. And then we want our pure green. And maybe we add a little bit of this earthy green to it too, just to tone it down a little bit. Yep, something like that. So pretty much that the green that comes out of the, the tube here, it's hooker's green, or it might be called viridian green, and or even phthalo green would work. And then I'm just adding a little bit of that other green mixture that we made to it. And we want a pretty sizable pile of it. We want it nice and thick because we're going to just Go around and make these little these little pitchfork shapes with it. And they might feel a little too perfect at first, but we can add darker ones with dark brown. We can add you know really thick ones. Make them feel as organic as possible by jumping around as much as possible and doing little like, sections of three of them. And we are really running short on time. No pun intended here. Um, I might have to jump to my other example. There was one other thing I wanted us to add. Okay, so we'll keep doing this. I'm going to pull out my, my other example here to, uh, for this last bit. Okay, so you'll just keep adding those little shapes until it feels nice and full and organic. You'll have to do it a few times. I use some dark brown uh, in there as well. And then the last thing I did was this fun like starry splatter which is a bit of a signature thing for me doing star splatter on on my work to make it feel even more ethereal and dreamy here so this is why if you post about this on social media it's always nice to Tag the, the artist that you're emulating here, because this is definitely my style on these lemons, especially with this action. Okay, and then I'm going to use my little spritzer. You can drip your water into this a few times. I just want it to be nice and uh, yogurty. So really mix up some water in with your white so that you get it feeling like a little puddle of yogurt maybe. And then actually I'm gonna do this on the other one because there's already so much of it on this yeah. one. So 
just moving some stuff so I don't let her white paint on everything on my desk. Feel free to do the same. Um, and then I'm also just moving away a little bit because I'm wearing a black shirt. And I'm loading up my paintbrush. Let me get that on screen. So I'm loading up the paintbrush, that long skinny brush, and getting it nice and full on the paintbrush. And then I am going to just hold it with my hand kind of tight and then tap it. And that'll get your fun little star splatter to happen. It just makes it feel like little fireflies or fairy dust or whatever you want to call it. And you can even use your paintbrush to add little pinprick versions of that. If you've got a steady enough hand to do that, or if you want to add some in wherever you feel like you need them. I just think they make everything dreamy. All right. I'm going to switch to my forward camera again. And if you want to hold up your, your work up until now, uh, we can spotlight you. Let's see, Laura. Oh, look at that, Laura. That is beautiful. Oh, I love that pink background and the way you did the time on the, the countertop. Oh, I love that you went with one of the other versions of the, the references that I shared. That's gorgeous. Thank you so much. Um, this is Patty. Oh, Patty, you just really developed those uh, those graphite sketches or maybe some charcoal or some chalk pastel, your value is gorgeous. Look how three-dimensional those all feel. Beautiful. Oh, and your time just looks gorgeous as well. I love it. I love it that you went that direction and just stuck with the, the drawings instead of the paintings with us. Oh, the value on those is just absolutely wonderful. And this is Barbara. Oh, I love that purple background, Barbara. Yeah, and all those different uh, tones of yellow and highlights in there. Just really popping. Oh my goodness, Tony, blowing me away. This is the one that was glowing last week. This is what I was talking about, I think, right? Yep. Oh, that's you. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love it. Okay. That is all you like you tag me in that if you post it, but that is in the style of Tony. I love it. That is just gorgeous. Beautiful work. Um, oh, is that it? We're a small group tonight. Oh, I see Graciela. Oh, Graciela. That's beautiful too. Oh my gosh, and yeah, you've got your own style happening there as well. That is just so lovely. I love how the background feels like water. All right, that's it. Um, Thank you all so much. Uh, what a great class. Y'all's paintings turned out so beautiful. Um, Yeah, I'm looking forward to November. Classes will be drawing hands and doing the, the pen and ink hands and the, the graphite hands and then that that fun perspective studies of the um, Polaroid box. All right, thank you all for all the wonderful feedback and thank you, Rich, for being such a great moderator. I'll see you in a few weeks. All right, good night.